Hi, this is Nathan Pierce from F5's Programmability and Orchestration team. We are now moving on to the 201 series of iWorkflow. The 101 series was all GUI driven. This is the first episode of the 201 series where everything will be done through the iControl REST API. So before you, you see the iWorkflow graphical user interface. We are not going to use that anymore in this series. So let's open a new tab. What we're going to do is we're going to start communicating with our iWorkflow using a tool called Postman. So further up in this particular article, you would have noticed I provided instructions on how to obtain Postman, install it, and even an introduction to REST. Uh, video which I highly recommend viewing. It shows you how to make REST API calls to well-known services like Facebook, Google Maps, and Twitter. So to see how to now apply those things you've learned to communicating with iWorkflow. So we're just going to go to Dev Central, and the, the easiest way, if you don't want to remember the URL, is scroll down on the left here. We've got iWorkflow. Once you click on iWorkflow, well, below is articles about iWorkflow. You'll find the 101 series in here and questions. Um, if you then click though on this page, learn more, that'll take you directly to the iWorkflow wiki, which is where we maintain the SDK. So you may want to bookmark this once you're there. Uh, further down on this page, you've got the 101 series. Below that, we have some conceptual documents and how-tos that we'll get to on another day. And then we have the API reference for iWorkflow. So this is what we're going to do to just show you how to make that first um, contact with your iWorkflow platform. So we're just going to pick on this particular one. We're going to, we're going to query the iWorkflow platform about the devices that it knows. So we'll go with something simple. We're just going to make a, a get request. We're just going to ask for detail. We're not going to give it an instruction or, or an action to perform, which would be done via a post request. So Anyways, an introduction to the Dev Central Wiki for iWorkflow. This is the kind of page you'll come to see. So we've picked out a particular URI from the iControl REST API. We give some instruction as to what it's for, um, the methods that supported, etc. Properties. These are the properties common to all devices. And then we have optional properties because sometimes it might be an iWorkflow device. Sometimes it might be a big IP. So there is some difference between the two and even information about the state of the device. So maybe you wanted to query this um, particular REST URI to see if it had finished onboarding a new big IP or not. So, so we can not just get an inventory list, but we can actually see the current state of, of you know, has the framework finished deploying um, uh, to a new big IP that needed a framework upgrade, etc. So you'll see there's plenty of information and even some examples of the type of payload you would receive back uh, when you're querying these devices. So anyway, let's just go right ahead and jump into executing one of these. So I'm just going to copy this URI here and we're going to go to Postman. So you should already be familiar with Postman. Again, I put some videos in this article. Um, we're going to just type in the management IP address. Oh, it looks like I've talked to this one a couple times before and you'll notice now I can just paste onto the end that URI. So here we go. We're going to hit send and as expected I've got a 401 authorization required. Uh, you would be surprised how often I jump straight in and forget that one but you'll notice up here authorization I can actually just quickly come into Postman and say you know what in fact, it still has the credentials from a few minutes earlier before I started recording. So now that we have that set, let's send again. Just put that a little shorter. It's now got the authorization basic in there with the details. And here we go. We've received a re response. The first one on the list is iWorkflow 101. That is the one we're communicating with. 10.128.1.130. We've got a lot of details about it, the version that it's running, the build number, the REST framework, um, its host name. This UUID is quite important. We'll talk a lot more about that in future episodes. Um, this is a unique identifier that's generated for each device. It's based on a few different criteria, but um, it 
won't be replicated even if I recycled the IP address and the host name at a later date the unique ID would still be different for those devices so so that's why we uh, we generate that uh, you'll see a little further down now we've actually got another I workflow here and then in fact we've got our big IP in this list so this is the manage big IP device 1160 hot um, and we have a little bit more information though that the iWorkflows don't have. So is this part of a big IP cluster, etc. Now something worth noting, I'm just going to go to the big IP here. You'll see the UUID, but you'll also see this self link. So this is a link to that particular object in the list. And I'm going to show you how that works. So I could either copy this self link, but you'll notice it's management shared resolve it. it's actually the same as what we have at the top so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the UID straight out for this big IP and I'm just gonna paste it on the end of that get request so now we have devices but we've got a specific UID we're referring to and go and you'll notice now we only have that one device it's not actually showing me any more um, within this response so that's quite a powerful tool for later. So if you want to deploy an iApp, for example, onto just one big IP, you can very quickly just pull up a list of big IPs, grab the UUID, and then push the uh, iApp template to that one. So we've only looked at a guest re get request in this one. This is just an introduction to the REST API. We will go into posts where you provide some uh, JSON payload and, and can push settings in later um, in a different episode. But importantly here is this resource um, in Dev Central. So I'm just gonna navigate back. You wanna um, know about this link here, this list in the API section. Um, and, and some of the great uh, how-to guides that we have. But also, I'll post this episode, the iWorkflow 201 episode one, um, and there'll be more to come. So next episode, what we'll do is actually deploy an application services template, but we'll do it via the REST API. In episode three of 101, we did it via the GUI. So we'll show you how we can do these exact same things um, outside of the browser. So that was all for this particular episode. Thanks for listening.